Hi, this is Abhimanyu. I have with me Kat Koiro, Director of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Kat, thank you for the time. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing great. Now, your show, apart from Tatiana, of course, it has Mark Ruffalo, Tim Roth, Benedict Wong. With so many starry cameos, how do you make sure that they're not a distraction? That the audience's focus is always on Jen Walters, the protagonist? The truth is, this is a very grounded in reality show. And our lead happens to be a lawyer who works at a superhuman law firm. So all of the cameos are very organic. We're not bringing them in just for the sake of it. We're bringing them in because they need legal representation. <laughs> That's the best way to go about it, I suppose, so that it's not a distraction. Now, the, the important thing about She-Hulk is she breaks the fourth wall so very often that it's, it's, it's funny. But MCU has never done that. So when the idea was pitched to the top brass, how did they react that you're going to do this in the show and that frequently? Well, the idea comes directly from the comic books. And She-Hulk was breaking the fourth wall way before Deadpool or Fleabag. And we just wanted to honor the comic books. The trick was finding how much was enough and right. how much was too much. Is this a passing of the baton show? Because we have seen that in Hawkeye, we've seen that in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. One of the core Avengers gives way to a younger, newer hero. So is that what Bruce is doing for Jen here? The passing of the baton for the future of MCU? Absolutely. Um, you know, part of the beauty of their relationship is that he has had this huge experience that he thinks uh, will really help her if he shares it with her. But what he learns is that she has a completely new and different experience and she's ready to approach the world as a totally new Hulk. Now, I'm, I know you said there are a lot of cameos in it and you, I named three of them. Was there anybody that you wanted to get, but because of a number of reasons, COVID, the star not available or whatever, you just couldn't and you feel like, ah, I wish I could have had that character or that actor as well. No, one of the brilliant things about working for Marvel is that you get any actor you want. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best thing about it. Is, is that a big draw that you can pretty much be a child and, and do whatever you wanted as a kid when you were playing with action figures and stuff, right? Absolutely. I think that so many people have a nostalgic connection to the comic books or, you know, with the younger people, even the movies were something that they experienced in their formative years. And so, you know, because Marvel keeps making high quality content, you have people who keep wanting to be engaged. And it was, as a director, a true dream. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're tired of answering questions about the supposedly bad CGI, which I don't agree it is. It's, it's, it's fabulous. But I'll come to you with a different question here. I, I notice when there are titles about uh, superhero women, they get disproportionately bad, not even reviews, just, just comments. Do you think it's a gender-based thing that some people get riled up when it's about female superheroes? Yeah, absolutely. Comic books are historically a male art form. And we're at a point in our culture where we're seeing a shift in representation, in gender, in ethnicity. And that's always an adjustment period for people. But I think the show is entertaining enough and, you know, has so many great uh, qualities to it that it's going to draw everybody in. Men, women, the whole world. And that's what we hope as well. Uh, Kat, thank you for your time. Uh, all the best for the show and hopefully you can chat again sometime soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.